Since the devil has deceived us so much that we have stopped thinking about what God promised he would do for us if we remain faithful to him. We have to go back to the story, friends. We have to go back and think about the promises of God. We have to. So the, the, the title for our reflection this morning is hold on to the promise. Hold on to the promise. Shall, you, uh, shall we say and uh, repeat after me? Hold on to the promise. One more time. Hold on to the promise. A third time, hold on to the promise. Then you ask yourself, what is the promise? You have to stop and think about what has Jesus promised us that I need to hold on to it. Sometimes there's too much noise in the church that we forget about the main things that the church is all about. We forget, but there must be a time when we stop and sort out the real ones from the fake ones. You see, God wanted to make our lives easier for us, okay? And then he gave us in charge of this world. But as soon as we started trying to put our brains to action and we started doing so many things and inventions and everything, now we come to a part, a time, God, I think we are okay here. You keep your heaven, we'll be okay here. So don't worry about us, all right? And therefore, what is happening is that in this particular age, everything is about now. Everything is about us and about now. But in your heart, do you believe that? As a believer, who sing uh, uh, at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the, my, my burdens uh, were all rolled away, or I hold on to the cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Do you believe that? Now, I go to Peter, Second Peter, to borrow some of the beautiful lines that he gave us. Second Peter 3, 13. He said, but in keeping with, the, with his promise, again, what promise? We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. What are you looking forward to, friends? Listen, one of the things that drive me to do everything I can do in God's vineyard is that of the promise God has given to us. He said, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Are you looking forward to that promise? It's all over the New Testament. From now onwards, when you are reading Matthew, uh, 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 Mark, Luke, Acts, read on, just look at this and see whether you can find the traces of this promise God or Jesus told us. So in keeping with the, the, his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. There is a, a story in the Bible that is not direct, but if you see Jesus's answer, you will understand that, hey, it was loaded. And if you unpack it, you can understand that everything points to this new heaven, new earth. A man came to Jesus because he, I think he saw how Jesus preached his energies, how he has convinced him if he can only come to his brother 
he can convince him to change his mind. What was that? his problem? His problem was that, listen, Jesus, can you come and convince my brother to share the inheritance that was left over and so that my brother will give me a portion of it or whatever he wanted? So look at it carefully. In this world, everything is about how inheritance, what you leave behind the, those, your children and those who will uh, follow you, your loved ones, right? Some people have become wealthy. They, they rose from grass to grace overnight because of inheritance. So these days, uh, if you marry and you are not careful, as soon as your partner discovers that there's about one million insurance, <laughs> he's going to get, <laughs> then he's having plans. <laughs> it's evil, but I know that I'm saying it here because church people are higher than that, right? Because the Holy Spirit, if you even think about that, know that you are somewhere outside God's realm of righteousness. Yeah, it happens all the time. They are caught all the time too, and they lose the money. So he comes to Jesus, Jesus, can you share the inheritance between my, myself? Jesus shook his head and he said, come on, but are you really serious? Who actually appointed me to come to your house and to be a judge? Huh? Are you really serious? Who would do that? I just walk into your family and I command your brother to share inheritance with you. But it's all about the greediness and the goods and everything. But Jesus, in his response, the latter part was very important to me. He said, after he said, who made, appointed me a judge over you and your brother? He said, then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Then this is why I want you to pay attention. Life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Life. It's not about how many good things that you have. Friends, I have buried people, and the family asked me to go during the time that they said that the doctor said they can do nothing anymore. They want you to go and have a service with the person. The person is in the, in the room in the hospital, right? And that's where you begin to see that life is spiritual. And you know that if he had a million dollars in the bank, it can save him. And he's leaving everything behind. If he had 20 houses, he is leaving them behind. The question is that why are we so greedy getting everything and forgetting about the main thing? Two things I want you to remember, earthly inheritance and the heavenly inheritance. Which is better? Which is better? Listen, Jesus didn't say that we should be so poor and wretched walking around with nothing. Of course, if I have a million dollars now, I will roll my sh shoulders and when I walk around, you see my shoulders are going up higher than here, right? <laughs> Everybody, we need the money here to live, to survive. But if we put the cart before the horse, that's where we get it wrong. Jesus himself said, seek ye the kingdom of God and its righteousness first, and the rest will, will all be yours. And so because of that, this morning, I want you to wrap your things more about the heavenly inheritance, you know, which we are all looking forward to when Jesus returns or when we die, 
whichever is first. Today, I'm going to give a, a couple of uh, scripture situation for you to know, not too many, so that you can understand where I am going. Again, Jesus, I've made it plain that there is resurrection after this death here, and you get some sect called the Sadducees who believe that Jesus is dead wrong. So in the gospel passage, if you listen to, to it carefully, they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, all right, you have been insisting that there is resurrection after death. Maybe you don't believe it, begin to think about it and believe it. Now, according to our custom, when you marry and you don't have children, your brothers must succeed you, right? There were seven brothers marrying the same woman and none of them had children and they all died, the woman died. So once they cross, if there is life beyond this place, who is going to marry? <laughs> And Jesus laughed, right? What did he say? He said, in the age to come, we don't marry. I think there is no thought of marriage. We are like angels. We will see each other. We will be happy to each other. If you think that sex is going to be part of what you are looking forward to, well, you better change your mind. <laughs> I didn't get a clue that the, we are going to have sex over there. The only thing is that the Bible says that we are going to be like angels. Okay. And after he said that, he added that, uh, that the, uh, uh, there will be, he added that, listen, God is God of the living, not of the dead. He said, that is why when Moses met, uh, 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 met, saw the burning bush and he went, when God introduced himself, he said, I am the God of Abraham, I'm the God of Isaac, I'm the God of Jacob, showing that they are still alive. That is why I want you to believe that if you have a loved one who died in the faith, he is still alive, friends. And where will you go if God should call you today? Where will you go? Where will your legacy be, your inheritance? It's about the earthly inheritance and the heavenly inheritance. But it, I know that based upon what Jesus said, the heavenly inheritance is better, all right? And Jesus spent his time talking about the heavenly inheritance, but we are numb to it. We don't want to pay attention. My question is, are you paying attention? You have to slow down and pay attention so that you will do what is right. And what even is interesting is that Daniel, Daniel, long before Jesus came, is telling us a vision, revelation that he was given. And listen to him as I read this portion. He said, there will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations and until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book will be delivered. That time, Joel is telling, you know, Daniel, Daniel was went to the exile, or he was in the exile, served Babylonians, served the Persians. So around that time, long before Jesus was born, and then he is saying that if your name is not in the book, you are out. All right? And he said, multitudes who sleep in the dust, those who are buried, all right? Dust of the earth who are awake, he said, some to everlasting life and others to everlasting shame. Is Daniel drawing the comparison, drawing the line that something like that was going to happen? 
when I read something like that in the Old Testament, it shakes me. It makes me wake up and sit up and ask myself, have I received Christ into my life? Have I surrendered to Jesus? Have I received Jesus into my life? That the spirit of God agree with my spirit that I am a child of God? Huh? Do I have the Holy Spirit in me as a guarantee that when he comes, it's going to be all right for me? Friends, let us strive for something that never perish. Right? Let us strive for something that will give us confidence and hope for the future. Because if only in this life we are building our confidence and our hope, then too bad. Too bad. Because we will be disappointed. Let me show you what Paul also wrote. He said, from a first Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, he said, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of humankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will, not, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. If you read this and you still have doubt, Maybe you can come and we can have discussion. Because this world is not only physical. Some of us have built all our hopes on what is around us. It is a mistake. It's an error. You need to correct now. This correction is not complicated. Only those who robes will be washed in the blood of the Lamb will make it. Only those whose names are written in the book of life will make it. Is your name written there? And as I've said, the only one step you need to do is to slow down and raise your hand in attitude of surrender to Jesus. Saying that Jesus, I have been struggling all my life, but it's not working. I, the world is behind me. You are in front of me. Come into my heart. Make me your child. From now onwards, I promise to obey everything you tell me because you are Lord and Savior of my life. From now onwards, I accept the Bible as your true word and I will abide by it. And he has given us provision that even if we slip, right, he will allow the blood to wash away our sins and we'll be restored. So it's not frightening that when you sin, oh, doomsday is over. No, no. God saves us by grace and keeps us by grace. Jesus knows that it's not easy to be a human being. And he has made the provision to help us in that journey. This is a story that is very thrilling among Christians because Jesus died in your place, died in my place, so that you no know longer have to die again. Jesus died for you. And as a result of that act, the heaven doors have been opened that, oh, I believe in Jesus, enter. Oh, I believe in Jesus, enter. Oh, I believe in Jesus. That's it. It's just that whilst we live here, 
Our life should be consistent as, a, as believers. And this is why we are supposed to go into the world and tell them that, hey, the, our life here is temporary. We are passing through this world. This world is not our final destination. We are only strangers here. And therefore, tell your family people, tell your friends, tell your co-workers that you need to do something about your life now before it is too late. Because a time is coming when we will not be able to do anything about it. Now, you walk in this realm, this world disbelieving what the scripture is saying, fine. And, and Professor Denton is here. <laughs> is, uh, Denton is here. Now, there are a whole lot of professors, when they read other people's books, they feel they know everything. But Professor is here in the church because his soul is seeking for something. Okay. Now, when they read all the books, they, they say the Bible is useless. Who, who told you it's useless? Okay, you can believe it or you can accept it. But the truth is that there is only one person who crossed from that spiritual world into our world to bring us revelation, to enlighten us about the life that is beyond here. And is endorsed the Bible. It was the Old Testament then and does everything that it is correct. So why is it that you want to choose not to believe in Jesus, but you want to believe in something else? Friends, I know that I love this subject, but I need to bring it to a close. But the question I ask you is that, do you know what the promise is? that you have to hold on it, to it. What is the promise? You have to define and declare in your mind that you know the promise. How do I believe it? And what am I to do to hold on to the end? It's not complicated. You just have to read the word, believe it, Live it also in your life. Don't just say it. Live it in your lives and tell others about it. Christians have taught, stopped telling this story that Jesus has saved us, has future for us. And therefore, we can't testify about Jesus anymore. And that's it. What is your problem? Let me ask you. What is your real problem when it comes to eternal home and a earthly home. What is your problem about believing in the eternal home? And why are you not giving enough attention to securing your place in the eternal home? And what are you going to, what are you going to inherit when you die? 